Hello and welcome to my next video for the Comp 511 Assignment 1, CS Paint. In this video, we're going to be looking some more at how you can get started, uh, in particular focusing on actually coding it up. So over on the left hand side, I've got the main function that we've provided you to get started with. So it starts off with, first of all, uh, this line here, int canvas and rows and calls. And so that creates this two dimensional array in memory that I've drawn over here of size n rows by n calls. It then calls this set blank canvas function, and we went through that in the previous video about how it goes through and fills in each of the elements in the two-dimensional canvas array with the, the white color, which was the number four. Then at the very end, we've got this print canvas line, which will print out your canvas, so print out the final state of your canvas. And in the middle, we've got this to-do saying write your code here. So I know it can be a bit overwhelming to look at this and just see, you know, to-do write your code here, solve the entire assignment in the spot and not really knowing what you should do. So I figured we'd break down roughly what you need to do and kind of what that code will need to look like. So like we've said before, the way that you interact with your canvas is by giving it these commands like I've drawn over here on the right hand side. So for example, this 11511 command says to draw a line, that's this one, from the starting location 15, this one here, so row 1, column 5, uh, going to the ending position over here, row 1, column 1. So just to illustrate that on the canvas down here, Starting location 1, 5 is going to be row 1, column 5, so this point here. Going through to an end location of 1, 1, so this row and this column here, so this point here. So that means that if your program was given this uh, 1, 1, 5, 1, 1 command here, it should draw a line from this point here across to this point here, so a solid line like that. But it'd be pretty boring if you could only just do one command and then that was it. You can only ever draw lines or single rectangles, like your pictures wouldn't be very interesting. And so your program needs to be able to read multiple commands and keep on processing those commands, doing what the commands say to do until it's reached the end of the input. So in terms of what that would look like, your program needs to read in the command and then process the command. But because you need to read in multiple commands, you can't just read in one single command and process that. You will need to repeatedly over and over again in our program, read in a command and process a command. So how do you do something repeatedly in your code? That's right, make a while loop. So the condition will pretty much be while there are still commands left to process, uh, read in the next command, so read in the next command, and then process that command. In terms of how you'd actually go about doing this, uh, a hint in terms of the while loop condition. If you think back to the reverse array lab exercise, you had to read until end of input. So you had to scan in the numbers until you ran out of numbers and then print them out backwards. So as a hint here, you're going to want to read until you get to the end of the input, which is also often called EOF. So in terms of reading in the commands and processing the commands, something I know people have been finding a bit tricky is how do you cope with the fact that the commands are different lengths? So for example, uh, command number one, draw a line, has always got four numbers. Command number two has four numbers, so that's fine. But command number three, change shade, just has one number afterwards. So if you always just scan in five numbers straight away, uh, it's not going to work when you try and do this change shade command. So in terms of how you could cope with that, something to notice here is that the first number in each command, so this one, draw a line, two, draw a rectangle, three, change shade, this first number tells you how many numbers you're going to need to scan in after that. So for example, if the command starts with a 1, then you know that you're going to need to scan in four more numbers for the start and end quadrant. Scanf can actually tell the difference between a space and a new line, so it would be fine to have one scanf for this number and then a separate scanf for these four numbers. That would work just fine. So then how you could actually go about coding this would be when you read in the next command, read in just this number here, which tells you what the command should be. So for example, if I've got some int called command that I can just read into, I can just do scanf percent %d into the variable called command. And so this will read in the first number that we've got here, this, this one or two or three. And so based on that command, we can work out what we should do next, and whether it's a one or whether it's a two or whether it's a three. How do we do that sort of thing in C? That's right, with an if statement. So we could say something like, if the command is equal to one, we know one means this draw line command over here. So if it's a one, we know we want to Draw. In order to actually draw the line, you need to scan in the other four numbers, the start row, start call, end row, end call. I just write them as row 1, row 2, call 1, call 2. Um, and then you want to actually use those to somehow go through your canvas and draw a line according to where those coordinates say you should draw it. One thing to note here, uh, this co if command equals equals 1 in our code, whenever you have just a random number like that, you should be thinking, does this number have some meaning beyond being the number 1? The answer here is yes, the one means to draw a line. So rather than just having a random one in our program, it's best if we make a hash define describing what that number means, and then use that hash define instead of the number. So I'm going to make a hash define at the top of the program here, hash define draw line command one. 
And so this means that I can replace this number one here with this draw line command. And so then when a human is reading our code, because of course we write our code for humans to read, uh, we have to follow the rules of C so that the computer can understand it too. But the primary target is the humans. So the human reading our code can go, ah, if command is equal to the draw line command, they don't really need to know the details so that the draw line command is the number one, because that doesn't really impact them. What they want to know when trying to understand your code is that if the command is equal to the draw line command, then draw a line. So hopefully that's all making sense so far. Um, I'll just walk quickly through those main function again. So like I said at the start, we've got our int canvas, n rows, n calls, and that creates this two-dimensional array like I've drawn here. Uh, the sizes for n rows and n calls are hashed to find in the actual starter code, not this little snippet I've got here, but those correspond to this number of rows and this number of columns. So your real canvas will be much bigger than my sample one I've drawn here. We then call the set blank canvas command. And remember, that's the one that loops through your canvas array, filling it all with the colors for white, which is the number four. So four, 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 da da da, -da so on. Uh, you then have your code, and so your code's going to loop on continuously while there are still more commands to read. You're then going to want to read in the command, so this number we've got over here showing what the command is, and then process that command. So based on what the command is, for example, if it's this this one, this draw line command, then draw a line. Scan the numbers to draw a line, loop through your array, draw the line. If it's a 2, fill a rectangle. If it's a 3, change a shade. If it's a 4, copy and paste, and so on. You'll then keep on repeating this loop, so going through, continuing on, looping while there are still more commands, read in the command, Based on what the command is, do the thing, loop through again, while there are still more commands, read in the command, do the thing, and so on. And then once you've finished reading in all of the commands, at the very end, just once, you're going to print out your canvas. And so again, this calls the print canvas function that we've given you, which will go through and print out your canvas. This print canvas function will just print it out as a number, so it'll print out all of the fours, and then, you know, zeros, ones, twos, whatever colors you set them to. But don't forget that you can run the 1511 canvas command, and give that your program. So 1511 canvas paint.c, for example, and then that will let you interact with your canvas. And then once you type control D there, it'll print it out in a pretty way rather than just giving you all the numbers. So it's a lot easier to see what's going on. Cool. So hopefully that's all made sense. Remember, if you've got any questions at all, you can ask them on the course forum. And otherwise, I'll see you in my next video.